my dear friends, for the Johannine Gospel to die in sin means to die in unbelief. Using the post-resurrection lenses, we, meaning contemporary followers of the Lord, we, in a way, have the facility to grasp this theological motif. But the early, the immediate auditors of the Lord, his original hearers, failed to understand such assertion. Why? Because they were trapped in their shallow logic. Now, observahin ninyo. Overconfident in their self-proclaimed righteousness, they misinterpreted the dreadful warning of the Lord as a manifestation as an intention as a plan a possibility of killing himself through suicide and therefore the Lord would end up in hell wherein they assume they would never end up so inana ang ilahang pangunahuna kaya di ba niingon man siya nga ang atong adtuan di mo kaadto so nagdahom sila that the Lord would commit suicide and those who would commit suicide in their perspective would never be part of the new creation. Nya sila, they would be part of the new creation. Mutong kaingon sila nga, I think, or they think that they would commit suicide. Something like that. Friends, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees just did not get it. They were the ones who would eventually plot and succeed to have the Lord killed and ultimately suffer the consequences of their unbelief or the corollaries of their rejection of the Messiah. As culpability is to malefaction, as responsibility is to power, and as accountability is to Stewardship, the judgment of condemnation is reserved for the stubborn and obstinate of heart. Palihog, pray over Romans chapter 2, verse 5. The gulf between accepting the weight of the Lord's obedient self emptying and loving sacrifice as the pathway to the fullness of life and wallowing in dissolute life of practical atheism and moral relativism renders the incompatibility of oil and water seemingly negligible. Brothers and sisters, the time to make the Lord's way, truth, and life as our very own is now. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Now. And so each time we look at the cross, especially during this fifth week of Lent, and as we come nearer the great celebration of our salvation, each time we look at the cross, we remind ourselves, no matter how wicked we have become, we are not beyond redemption because love has already triumphed over sin, death, and evil. As a way of concluding our short reflection, cognizant of the certainty of death, I think that's the surest thing in this life. All of us would die. With that in mind, we have a choice to make either to die in sin, flustered, crestfallen, and frightened by impending eventualities, or to die in faith, serene, blissful, and yearning for what is to come. The choice 
is for us to make.